So welcome again. We have to continue the general debate on the DGs and RGs uh, addresses. I remind you to deliver your interventions concisely and no longer than five minutes, please. And I mean it this time, no longer than five minutes, even less than five minutes, because the time became very limited. I have here 16 countries wishing to take the floor, and I don't think that we can push it in one hour. We shall see what we do, but please take it into consideration. So let's start immediately with Hungary. Hungary, please, and then Lithuania. Thank you very much, dear Director General, dear uh, Regional Director, Honorable Ministers, distinguished delegates, and dear colleagues. Aligning with the EU statement and the member states, I would like to express our greatest thanks to Susanna Jakab for her report and for this decade-long activity which formulated the health in the region and our approach on the global level as well. And this leadership and these skills contributed strongly to our region and the member states how we are thinking about and shaping health and health policy. This framework, what's called Health 2020, is an excellent framework for these activities. We very honored and proud that we could contribute and we could receive a lot of help and facilitation from the WH Europe and also contribute to its activity in different manners. And I thought to bring three examples here which were really very important moments in this. One of it, let me emphasize, the meeting last year, which was the WHO support to achieve better health in Europe, more equitable and sustainable. And that was a great meeting with a lot of public health experts, a lot of political commitment, making an agreeable approach to close the gap and to decide the uh, decline or erase the difference between the poor and the rich and use health and health policy and its framework to get the gap smaller or to cover it completely. The other example that was very, very important, I said we fully appreciate that, that we had the opportunity to place a bust, a statue, in the Geneva headquarter about Ignaz Semmelweis. His figure is a legend for hand hygiene, and to us it's a very good example for observation, dedication, and innovation, and its profound effect in prevention, which became widely accepted, which became a cheap intervention, and which became, I think, an example that even if things are hard to change, it's worthy to do so, and it needs commitment. And the last thing that I would like to mention here as well, that we were encouraged by the WHO when we called together the first ministerial conference on partnership and cooperation in oncology, and we established a Central Eastern European Academy of Oncology to put together a platform for more research, more common shared thinking, and more activity in the region where we have an utmost importance of our committed uh, actions to change the deadly figures caused by different cancers. We really appreciate that the WHO region and the director uh, welcomed this approach and facilitated this platform. Thank you very much, Jana. And finally, if, we can, if it comes to bringing together the public health interventions, the health promotion as health prevention activities, we are very proud and we are very happy as Hungary, when it made different steps since 2010, how to change the behavior of the public. And we and introduced public health product tests, had the legislation on trans fats on food, made efforts for healthier public catering, introduced daily physical educations. Some of them 
are part of the compendium of the 22 good practices of the WHO. We really appreciate that we could share that with the other member states. We are very happy that there are many, many good examples from other member states that we could learn from. And I really see this leadership of the WHO in practice through this exchange of good practices. By the end, let me say, a very personal big thank you and congratulations to Susanna Jakab. And let me say it in my mother tongue, Kösönöm. Kösönjük. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hungary. Lithuania, please, followed by Netherlands. Thank you, Director General, Madam Regional Director, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Delegates. Lithuania fully aligns itself with the statement made by Finland on behalf of EU and its member states. We wish to thank the Director General for this presence at the Regional Committee and your commitment to European Regional Office. Lithuania appreciates the Reg Regional Director for the comprehensive report on the work done during the past years and the outstanding leadership in achieving a healthier European region. Lithuania commends all the work done by regional office, especially in three areas. First, in the area of strengthening people-centered health systems and progressing to universal health coverage, Lithuania particularly welcomes the initiative of the regional office to support member states with monitoring financial protection, producing country-level analysis for national policy developments in the context of sustainable development goals, and providing policy recommendations in the field of financial protection and universal health coverage. Therefore, Lithuania supports that monitoring of financial protection is a core component of health system performance assessment. Second, in regards to combating NCDs and their risk factors, we welcome the progress done in the region combating premature mortality. Nevertheless, still more to be done in the areas of tobacco controls and harmful use of alcohol, unhealthy diets, physical inactivity, and diabetes. We therefore fully support that countries need to scale up imp implementation of best buys capitalizing and implementing the political commitments taken up at the third United Nations high-level meeting on NCDs. And third, we welcome the work done by the regional office in the field of health emergencies, communicable diseases, and IMR. We commend the regional office support for the joint external evaluation of the international health regulations implementation in Lithuania that was held in November last year. The evaluations have an excellent opportunity to improve public health preparedness and response, as well as for the support in strengthening and maintaining the capacities for ensuring rapid detection, verification, and response to public health threats. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to thank Regional Director and the Regional Office for the constant and evidence-based support in reforming and strengthening of health systems. Please accept, Madam Regional Director, our deepest appreciation for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lithuania. Netherlands, please, followed by Norway. Thank you, Chair. The Netherlands Alliance itself with the statement made by Finland on behalf of the European Union. And we would like to add the following. Dear Susanna, this morning we have listened with pleasure to your last address as regional director to the regional committee. And as always, you gave a broad overview of the work that has been done, but not of the past year, but now of the past 10 years. And not, not surprisingly, there are a lot of points of light, but unfortunately also persistent or newly arising problems. And just to mention a few, the high incidence of HIV in our region, the outbreak of diseases like measles, which we have assumed to be a disease of the past, the serious resistance 
against vaccination among certain groups in society, anti-stagnation reduction of harmful consumption of alcohol. Just to mention a few, but looking back at the last 10 years, I think we have achieved a lot. Dear Susanna, in the past 10 years, you played your role as regional director vigorously, both in content as well as management. We certainly have the impression that you created a pleasant atmosphere here in the regional office, but also during our official meetings. And that is certainly instrumental to good results. During your term as RD, the regional office and the Netherlands have consolidated and further elaborated their good relationship. Earlier this year, WHO and the Netherlands concluded a new multi-annual partnership program. Through this, a substantial part of our voluntary contributions to WHO will be channeled to the regional office. And we do this with pleasure. Whoever your successor will be, tomorrow we will know. He or she can count on our determination to continue our good cooperation with the Copenhagen office. Although the end of your term as RD is in sight, you will not be out of sight altogether. On the contrary, I would say, as the DG appointed you as his deputy earlier this year. And could one think of a stronger expression of appreciation of your work as RD? To conclude, and more on a personally note, Susanna, I would like, please, take our thanks for all the work you did as regional director. I personally, I have been in this adventure of yours for the last 10 years. I personally really appreciated the way we work together and the way we have uh, dealt with each other, sometimes a difficult subject, but quite often we agreed on a lot of issues. So, please, continue the good work in Geneva, and we certainly will stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Netherlands. Norway, please, followed by Portugal. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, Director General, in your address, you spoke on your meeting with universal health coverage in our neighboring countries, Denmark, UK, and Sweden. Uh, I can assure you that if you had extended your studies and come to Norway, uh, you would found another country uh, working on implementing universal health coverage, starting after the Second World War, being quite a poor country, uh, but trying to develop health services that are universally accessible and financed solidarily. The rich pay more. So we are fully behind your agenda on universal health coverage. Provision of basic health services at a cost that does not impose financial hardship should be a priority for each government. Strengthening primary health care is key to achieve this. And the best way to provide services is to make sure that no one's left behind. We're very pleased to see how faithful you are to your election campaign on universal health coverage. We hope the UN meeting next week will be a success and an important step forward. We wish you and all of us the best of luck. Next week, we will also see the launch of the SDG Global Action Plan. That will be an important platform for 12 major global health actors to work together for countries to achieve the health-related MDG, health-related SDG uh, goals. Focusing on universal health coverage, you should help the group. The WHO leadership is needed for that. Director General, very high medicine prices is a challenge to universal health coverage in low-income countries and in developed countries. You mentioned yourself in your address how 
out-of-pocket payments for medicines drive people into poverty. We now see that countries are faced with high prices of medicines also. In our country, we have public debates on whether or not to take on new drugs based on their benefits and related to their costs. It's a surprise to us that Norway is currently saying no to half of all the new offered drugs that are a benefit to patients. It's a huge health loss for our population and a public health concern. Regional Director, thank you for your analysis on the development in the European region over the last 10 years. And thank you for the report to the uh, committee. Both are signs of strong leadership and determination to serve member states of the region and of assisting them in improving public health over the last decade. Your vision, as laid out in the Health 2020 strategy, managed to capture the important trends that any comprehensive public health policy should address and has proved itself a helpful strategy to assist policymaking in all member states. We believe that these policies are overarching strategies that will help us also in the years to come. We particularly would like to stress what has been achieved during your leadership running the regional office in an efficient and forward-looking way. We're pleased to see how governance has improved over the years and how the work of the office has become more closely aligned to that of the headquarter. In order for the World Health Organization to deliver effectively on its mandate, we need to see this organization working and delivering as one across all levels as well as horizontally. Thank you. Thank you, Norway. Portugal, please, followed by Romania. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Director General, Madam Regional Director. It's an honor and a privilege for me to speak at this uh, session of the Regional Committee. Of course, Portugal aligns with the statement delivered by Finland on behalf of the European Union, and if you allow me, aligns also with the statement from my colleague for Norway about the issue of the, the sustainability of our systems. But, Madam R Regional Director, I begin to thank you uh, the work uh, that has been done for the past 10 years. Uh, thank you very much for all the work you conduct for Portugal. It was very good to have your leadership, and I would like to wish you the best as WHO Deputy Director General. Of course, I would like to confirm the support of Portugal to WHO, opening, uh, hoping to continue the partnership work that we have been developing so far, and which we hope will continue to be fruitful over the coming decades. I just would like to underline the universal health courage, a team that you choose for the World Health Day, which is very important and one of the goals of to be achieved by 2030 by all members of the United Nations, according to the Sustainable Development Goals. It's, uh, it's uh, worth to recall that only half of the world's population does benefit from full health coverage yet. Forty years ago, in Portugal, the Portuguese National Health Service was creating, created, enforcing this right and ensuring that all citizens have access to timely, adequate and quality health care, while being financially protected by the state from the impoverishing effects of the disease or the cost of new drugs. That universal character of National Health Service gives us a dynamic of unique openness, translating into an element of fundamental social inclusion for the Portuguese society, offering the entire population comprehensive health care coverage, safeguarding access and equity. 
through that, we achieve the unquestionable health gains, reducing maternal and child mortality, increasing or being full the vaccination coverage, increasing healthy life expectancy, reducing premature mortality. However, several challenges remain to the effective universal coverage of care. Granting access to health care by migrants and refugees is still a major challenge worldwide, whereas it should be a right everywhere. Promoting the health of refugees and migrants is a priority for Portugal. We have adopted non discriminatory and inclusive policies in all aspects of social life and in particular in health. Access to medicines, vaccines and other health products, uh, it's much needed. We need to prioritize transparency throughout the value chains of markets for pharmaceutical. Portugal supports and stimulates WHO's actions to uphold this agenda. Also, the area of mental health it is, is crucial to subsume, to subsume in a human rights approach, eliminating institutionalization and placing mental health care provision with, within the community paradigm. In this regard, we recall the resolutions we have promoted at the Human Rights Council with the support of WHO, and each were adopted by consensus we urge WHO to raise its action to promote human rights in mental health and to fight all forms of stigma, discrimination, violence and, co and coercion. It is crucial also to ensure access to healthy choices, to increase health literacy in order to people make informed choices in areas like tobacco or uh, food with uh, fat and sugar. To conclude, uh, stress also that the area of HIV AIDS in Portugal, we already uh, achieved the 390 its objective, and we are now going for the 230 objective, raising those three goals to 95%. So allow me to finish with a, a desire to the a quote for our regional director, Dr. Susanna Jacob, from her speech at last year's session of the regional committee, making progress towards better health challenges, challenges to work in a transformative way. That's what we've done to transform our health systems to create better health. Thank you. Thank you, Portugal. Romania, please, followed by Russian Federation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, Honorable Director General, Regional Director, distinguished colleagues. Romania endorses the statement made, made by Finland on the behalf of the European Union. First, Romania wants to congratulate Dr. Tedros, Director General, for his intervention during the 69th session of WHO Regional Committee for Europe. Universal health coverage and concrete objective and interventions included in the, in the 13th General Program of Work 2019-2033, open a new era regarding health policy in all, all countries. Universal Health Coverage 2030, as a global movement to build stronger health systems, will allow to reach the SDGs, where health is a crucial domain influence, influencing most human activities. Romania, it's an honor to congratulate Regional Director Dr. Susanna Jacob for her leadership in the European region of WHO and worldwide. After 10 years as regional director, Dr. Yapak succeeded to launch, to coordinate, and to implement the policies, projects, and programs, which enabled important achievements in the public health and improvement of health indicator for the citizen of our region. Highly experienced with an impressive activity in WHO regional office and ECDC, before being elected as a regional director, Susanna Jakab improved cooperation of member states, has developed technical assistance activities, and answered timely for all health emergency in the region. Development of national health policy in line with global commitments with 2030 agenda, were priorities of the regional director. We are very satisfied to see you nominate as deputy DG of WHO, a position which will offer the opportunity for the organization to use your extensive experience and leadership. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Romania. Russian Federation, please, followed by Slovenia. Спасибо. Уважаемый господин председатель, уважаемый генеральный директор, уважаемый региональный директор, уважаемые дамы и господа. Прежде всего хочу поблагодарить генерального директора доктора Тедроса за его выступление. Также хочу поблагодарить регионального директора за содержательный доклад и отметить, что Российская Федерация в целом удовлетворена деятельностью Европейского регионального бюро ВОЗ и достигнутые результатами. Под вашим эффективным руководством, госпожа Яков, Европейский регион в течение многих лет уверенно держит лидирующую позицию в масштабах глобального здравоохранения. Прогресс нашего региона в достижении устойчивого развития доказывает эффективность европейской модели выстраивания работы с государствами-членами. Составляющей нашего успеха является формирование и реализация региональной политики, аккумулирование и рассредоточение ресурсов организации на всем пространстве региона, привлечение и использование финансовой и экспертной поддержки государств-членов, объединенные усилия, направленные на выполнение повестки «Здоровье-2020». Реализованный в регионе подход, основанный на вовлеченности каждого государства в решение наших общих задач, способствовал формированию лидерского потенциала, который позволит эффективно решать сохраняющиеся проблемы регионального здравоохранения, среди которых обеспечение более справедливого и устойчивого улучшения здоровья и защиты от финансовых трудностей, вызванных необходимостью оплачивать услуги здравоохранения из личных средств. С удовлетворением отмечаем, что в докладе представлены весомые результаты работы географически удаленного офиса, в том числе Московского ГО, по работе с НИС, по борьбе с НИС, включая многочисленные мероприятия и новые разработанные руководства и инструменты, что еще раз подтверждает правильность принятого правительством Российской Федерации решения о выделении финансовой и экспертной поддержки ВОЗ для этой борьбы. При этом, следует, следуя принципу комплексного и всеобъемлющего подхода Российской Федерации, Российская Федерация активно участвует в реализации приоритетных направлений деятельности ЕРБ ВОЗ, в борьбе с туберкулезом и другими опасными инфекциями, укрепление готовности гуманитарным чрезвычайным ситуациям, создание сети квалифицированных специалистов в укреплении здоровья населения всех возрастных групп с особым вниманием к уязвимым группам. В заключение хотел бы еще раз поблагодарить госпожу Якоб и всю команду регионального бюро ВОЗ за последовательность, настойчивость в достижении благородных целей, которые вы ставили перед собой. Выражаем уверенность, что в своей новой роли на должности заместителя генерального директора ВОЗ вы, госпожа Якоб, станете проводником положительного регионального опыта в деле развития организации на глобальном уровне. Позвольте пожелать всем успешной работы на 69-й сессии Европейского регионального комитета и крепкого здоровья. Благодарю за внимание. Thank you very much, Russian Federation. Slovenia, please, followed by Turkey. Mr. President, Director General, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Slovenia aligns itself with the statement of EU. We would like to thank the regional director, Susanna Jacob, for excellent report and the work done this year and the previous years. We would also like to express our appreciation of your leadership, in particular in promoting health equity as an underlying value and principles and for strongly advocating for joint action at all levels to assure that nobody is left behind. It was a great honor for Slovenia to support you and the office by hosting the first WHO conference accelerating progress for healthy, prosperous life for all in the European region in June in Ljubljana. We were pleased that discussion were focusing on health as an investment and look forward to implement the new equity tools and strategies that were presented. Slovenia welcomes the ongoing work to accelerate implementation of commonly agreed strategic documents that have been launched within the framework of Health 2020. 
We are approaching a new decade and will have to consider a new framework to support us in implementing Agenda 2030 and achieving the SDGs. Good experience with Health 2020 and its implementation will no doubt inspire us also for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Slovenia. Turkey, please, followed by United Kingdom. Thank you, President, Honorable Director General, and Madam Regional Director, Excellencies, distinguished delegates. I would like to start my expressing uh, my gratitude to all members, member states and the Secretary for organizing the Regional Committee. I'm confident that this Regional Committee will result in fruitful outcomes which enlighten our way for a better future. As you know, Tomorrow, we will be electing uh, our new regional director. WHO Euroregion always emphasized the importance of merit, gender balance, and equitable geographical representation, established its culture in, the, in that way, and became an example for the rest of the world. In this manner, Turkey is honored to nominate a highly competent, experienced, and visionary woman leader whom we believe will undertake this critical position successfully. Using this opportunity, I would like to wish all the best to all the candidates during the elections tomorrow. Madam Regional Director, I would like to thank you for the comprehensive, comprehensive report you have submitted this year, as in the past nine years. The report is a clear demonstration of you and your team's valuable efforts in the last year. As we all know, resilient health systems can only rise on well-structured primary health care services. In addition, digitization of health systems carries a vital importance towards more efficient, safer, and high-quality health services, as well as timely access and collection of the evidence that we need. With this in mind, Important investments were made to primary health care and health information technologies, which contributed substantially to the success of Turkey's health reforms. Therefore, I appreciate your efforts to accelerate the implementation of primary health care as we all committed with Astana Declaration, and to including digitization in health both in the report and on the agenda of the regional committee. Equity is a fundamental element towards universal health coverage, which is also the principle of sustainable development goals, leaving no one behind. In order to assure equity, we need to collect data and build evidence. Therefore, I congratulate you and believe that the newly launched Health Equity Status Report initiative will be beneficial to all of us to improve health of all all our populations. Distinguished participants, public health trees have always existed throughout the history, and we now observe additional chains with emerging and re-emerging trees. Today, factors like communicable diseases and influence of population brings us together as joint responders to global health trees as in the past. Turkey, as the host country to more than 4 million Syrians provide health services with the highest quality and the most extensive package, same as our citizens' benefits, represents an exemplary model of universal health coverage. This is not only a humanitarian assistance, but, but also a safety assurance of health security within the European region of WHO, as this represents the major migration routes to Europe. However, considering the magnitude of the problem and the complexity of the needs, migra migration issues require international solidarity and responsibility sharing. My country demonstrated the best examples of a comprehensive package of prevention, health promotion, and care devoting the highest level of responsibility when the peoples, regions, and the world's health are at stake stake. Dear Susanna, I would like to thank you for your vision, leadership, and dedication leading to a huge success in implementing the health policies and priorities. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge your successful work, which contributed substantially to global health, 
and the health and well-being of the European region in particular. I have no doubt that we will enjoy the cooperation as harmonious as this and make more successful work in your new position. We will miss you, miss your unique and heartwarming, joyful laughters. Distinguished delegates, I thank you for your leadership and all efforts. I wish you a fruitful regional committee. Thank you, Turkey. United Kingdom, please, followed by Cyprus. Thank you, Chair. The UK aligns with the statement delivered by Finland on behalf of the EU and its member states. Thank you, Director General, for your address, highlighting the importance of achieving universal health coverage, which is truly universal. Thank you also, Regional Director, for your address. We would like to take this opportunity to add our heartfelt thanks to you, Dr. Jakob, for your leadership of the regional office over the past 10 years. We welcome in particular your foresight in driving the development of Health 2020, which has proved to be ahead of the curve of global developments. We would also like to thank you for your strong collaborative work with partners and the progress you have made on working across silos and on relationship building during your term as regional director. We look forward to continuing to work with you at WHO Geneva. The UK will, of course, remain committed to the values within European initiatives such as Health 2020 and the Talent Charter. Your report rightly highlights the evidence base, major achievements and indeed the challenges ahead. This biennium marks significant anniversaries in the development of healthcare systems globally. In 2018, our own NHS shared a 70th birthday with WHO and this year our health ministry marks its centenary. These have been times of fast-paced change, and we need to be ready to respond and seize the opportunities of new, that the new developments offer. We look forward to electing the next regional director tomorrow and working with them to build further on your work of the last 10 years and continue this region's reputation as a leader in global health. Thank you. Thank you, United Kingdom. Cyprus, please, followed by Italy. Thank you, Chair. Cyprus is fully aligned and supports the common statement as read by Finland on behalf of the EU countries. Republic of Cyprus would like to congratulate the regional director for the most comprehensive report as well as the huge work accomplished under her leadership over the last 10 years, aiming to secure the highest standard of health as a fundamental right, continuing to improve health in the region. It is obvious from the report that the center of gravity of 2018-2019 activities continued to be 2030 Sustainable Development Goals in line with Health 2020 policy framework. The two are truly coherent and integrated, and it is apparent that health is an essential component and driver of sustainable development, and this reflects the multidimensional and multisectoral uh, nature of health and its determinants. This change in the way of working has been the response of the region to political and social challenges. It, it includes, among others, universal health coverage and health equity, health determinants, health environment, innovation, and research. The aim is to maximize opportunities for promoting population health and well-being, to reduce health inequities, and to strengthen public health through an equitable, sustainable, and high-quality people-centered health care. Supporting countries in the region to strengthen public health capacity and develop people-centered health systems that are universal, equitable, and sustainable has been a cornerstone of the, region, of the regional offices' work to achieve Health 2020 and the Sustainable Development Goals. Health systems are at the core of policies seeking to combine better use of resources and greater response to rising needs of patients. Cyprus is in the process of implementing the general health system, which is the biggest endeavor being undertaken so far by the Ministry of Health. The introduction of the general health system uh, on the 1st of June 2019 ensures the improvement of the quality of the services provided and provides the guarantee for an economical, viable health system. It is based on the principles of universal health coverage equity in the provision of health care services on the basis of need rather than the ability to pay, solidarity, and high quality of services. This first 
phase includes the outpatient health care, family doctors, specialists for outpatient care, pharmaceuticals, and labs for outpatient care, with the full GHS implementation taking place on the 1st of June 2020. To address all major issues and inefficiencies of the current system, a more comprehensive reform of the health care sector is being undertaken besides the implementation of the NHS, which includes the traumatization of public hospitals, the modernization of primary health care, the introduction of e-health, the establishment of university clinics, and the setting of a national medicines agency. In this effort, we have found valuable partners at the face of the regional director, Dr. Jakob, and I want to take the opportunity to, hear her, to thank her once more. I am confident that for the years to come, even in the absence of Susanna, European office will continue to pursue its vision for better health for Europe through its operation as an administratively efficient, technically excellent, innovative, flexible, and disciplinary organization. Thank you. Thank you, Cyprus. I inform you that I have Italy, Belgium, San Marino, Albania, Belarus, and Israel. If you permit me, I will close the list. Oh. Have to take Malta. Malta. Okay. So, the list is closed. Italy, please, followed by Belgium. Thank you, Chair. First of all, we will fully align to the statement made by Finland for the EU countries. Italy listened with great interest to the addresses from the general director and the regional director. In particular, we appreciated the priorities outlined by the two main responsible for health strategies at global and regional level. In our opinion, the efforts made by, uh, for obtaining better health for our citizens in the last years can be considered a good starting point for the efforts we have to do in next years for reducing the impact of a communicable and non-communicable disease. We will thank in particular Dr. Jacob for the perspective and visionary approach on which was based the Health 2020. Adopting it, we were able to launch in the Euro region some programs many years before they were adopted at global level. And so, as Dr. Jacob said, in some cases, the Euro region is the first one or the only W region already reached the expected results. We, or we, as countries of the region, will work in the future aiming at maintaining the results, at fulfilling the gaps already existing, and at dealing effectively with the new challenges raising from the social, cultural, economic, environmental changes in our society and from new health threats. In this perspective, Italy is already collaborating with the Euro Office, funding the Venice GDO, who works at uh, health equity, and the first project on migration, which provided ministries of health in the Euro region, unique technical and innovative support in addressing the public health needs of refugees and migrants, a summer school, uh, the knowledge hub on migration, the report on the health of refugees, and some technical guidance documents. We would invite from now the new regional director to continue to work and to make available strategic plans and tools, as was Health 2020, in connection with the countries and continuous dialogue with the regional offices closest to the Euro 1. Thanks again to Dr. Jacob for the input we received today that we are fully committed to develop at the national level in the future. And finally, I would like to express my personal thanks to Susanna Jacob for the suggestions and collaboration in preparing the Italian presidency in 2014, uh, where you participated personally in many events organized by Italy, for the continuous helpfulness of your staff, and uh, for the work we made together in the preparation of the 68th Regional Committee, and last but not least, for your personal friendship in this decade. Thank you so much. Thank you, Italy. Belgium, please, followed by San Marino. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Director General, 
Madam Deputy Director General and also Regional Director, Excellencies, colleagues. So we align the statement made by Finland on behalf of the European Union and its member states. And first of all, Belgium would like to thank the Director General, Dr. Tedros, for his active leadership and compelling messages in his speech this morning. We also appreciate your presence at our regional committee as a sign of our strong partnership between the regional and the global level. Then we seize the occasion to thank the regional director, Susanna Jacob, for the strong leadership shown throughout the last years and the prominent role she has played in bringing health forward in the European Reunion. And we would like to include in our thanks the whole regional office, comprising the globally dispersed offices for the valuable contribution provided. We acknowledge the added value Health 2020 brought to the region. It was and still is innovative and shaped the way we look at governance of health, at health equity, health in the life course and health system strengthening. Health is a political choice, be it on universal health coverage, technological progress or vaccination, health should not only be taken into account, health should have its say. In spite of the positive evolutions achieved in the last 10 years, the challenges ahead of us are manifold and as diverse as your regions. We hope we can continue to work together and join forces in the future as we did in the past. So, dear Susanna, we want to think, thank you for all the work you have done and we are very glad that you will still be working for us in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Belgium. San Marino, please, followed by Albania. First of all, let me thank you the, to Hardy Susanna Jakab for her strong leadership uh, and for her support to my country and to small country initiative. <clears throat> the Republic of San Marino is a country with a small population, but with big and very solid principles. Equity in all its forms, including health equity, is certainly the very essence of our longest lasting democracy, which was also recently praised by the WHO DG Dr. Tedros in his res recent visit last April. San Marino wants to position itself as a pioneer country in many areas of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. Among them, we want to be pioneers in reducing health inequities, thus addressing the Sustainable Development Goals number 10. Inequity, in, inequality within and among nations continues to be a significant concern despite progress in and efforts at nar narrowing disparities of opportunity, income, and power. For this reason, under the Small Countries Initiative, we held equity at the center of our high-level meeting held in San Marino last April, with the attendance of DG, acting RD, ministers, and high-level officials from the eight historical countries part of the initiative, plus the, the three new countries which have now joined and which are very welcome, Estonia, Latvia, and Slovenia. The, mini, the meeting was memorable and indeed historical. In his speech to the our head of state, uh, Dr. Tedros said, San Marino is a stable, developed, and peaceful country. The, that is not because it is small, but because it adopts the right policies. This is an example for all countries, small and big. San Marino emphasis on equity and social security is the bedrock of a strong society and is something that many larger countries could learn from. It is also the essence of the Sustainable Development Goals with their catch cry of leave one, no one behind. Fully resonating with his remarks, I, as the Minister of Health of San Marino, have promoted the idea of, of endorsing at the sixth high level meeting the San Marino statement endorsed by all the 11 small countries with population less than two million. The title say, it all ensuring no one is left behind. Small countries were pioneers once again. This statement was the first of a series of declarations and statements which we saw 
this year calling countries to accelerate progress towards healthy, prosperous life for all, and increase equity in health. The statement shows the commitment of small countries to reducing inequities through a force to close the coverage and access gaps, enhance people's participation in decisions pertinent to their health, and reduce exposure to discrimination and stigma, as well as differential exposure to commercial pressures that polarize inequity in health. The statement emphasizes that governments, health system, and public authorities at all levels have a role to play in ensuring that health equity is central to their policies, strategies, and plans. By virtue of their size, small countries have a strong potential to function as incubators, providing an understanding of how things work. The Republic of San Marino stands ready to support the achievement of a more equitable and prosperous for all in Europe. Thank you. Thank you, San Marino. Albania, please, followed by Belarus. Honorable General Director, Honorable Regional Director, Excellencies and distinguished members of delegations, it is always a privilege and satisfaction to address a WHO Regional Committee. It's a privilege because it is one of the highest forum in health in European region, where the health and well-being of the current generation in our region is scrutinized, and further sound health development venues for the next generations are explored, pondered, decided upon, and consensually adapted for action. It's also, it's also a special satisfaction to be here because it feels like home. Differences apart, we share the same concerns. This was grasped very well by WHO Regional Office for Europe under the leadership of Dr. Susanna Yacab, who has managed to provide effective support to countries in the region in embracing common values and pursuing the strategic directions towards universal health coverage as laid out in Health 2020. Dear Dr. Yacab, on behalf of the government of Albania, I am taking this opportunity to express appreciation for your commitment, diligence, determination, and effectiveness in shaping the health policy in the European region in your capacity as Regional Director of WHO Regional Office for Europe. You have also contributed in forging partnerships among stakeholders in the region, one example being the issue-based coalition on health and well-being, which is a coordination mechanism focusing on the achievement of SDG 3 and of the health-related targets present in other SDGs. We are confident that your insights, expertise, and experience will continue to be available assets for this organization in the years to come in the new position. Honorable delegates, the organization's 13th general program of work, 2019-2023, is a game-changer at the global level. WHO Regional Office for Europe is in the forefront of this work. We congratulate the Secretariat for the work in strengthening WHO work at the country level in order to deliver the GPW13. The process, the frame, and the content of Biennial Collaborative Agreement 2020-2021 reflects such a trend. During the last year, Albania has benefited technical assistance from WHO in some key areas, primary health care policy and standards of services, cancer prevention and screening, tobacco control legislation, surveillance of communicable diseases, and health emergency risk assessment. Allow me to share you the ambition and ongoing work of the Government of Albania to operationalize the principles and components of Astana Declaration on Primary Health Care in the, in the context of my country. It is all about integrating health service with social one, on preparing conditions for implementation of uh, health literacy at the community level, leaving no one behind. As pointed out in GD and RD report, the inequitable state of health in Europe is a fact. Countries need informed choices to make the right decisions. Countries need tools to implement the right choices. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Albania. Belarus, please, followed by Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will use to my right speak Russian language. 
уважаемый председатель, уважаемый генеральный директор, уважаемый региональный директор, в первую очередь разрешите выразить слова признательности за очень содержательные и интересные доклады как генерального, так и регионального директора, которые содержат подробную информацию о огромной работе, которая была проделана за последние 10 лет. Но что еще более ценно, там содержится анализ и понимание тех проблем и вызовов, которые стоят перед системой здравоохранения, а также готовность, готовность их максимально и эффективно решать на современном уровне. Еще больше слова благодарности вызывают годы совместной работы с доктором Жужаной Якоб. За последние 10 лет сотрудничество Республики Беларусь и ВОЗ приобрело системный комплексный характер и затрагивало ну, практически все направления деятельности системы здравоохранения. Это, казалось, и это касалось и содействия в организации борьбы с ВИЧ-спидом, туберкулез, неинфекционное заболевание, психическое здоровье злоупотребление психоактивными веществами, профилактика травматизма у детей, репродуктивное здоровье, скрининг рака молочной железы, укрепление систем здравоохранения, эпитнадзор, решение задач целей устойчивого развития. Перечислять можно достаточно долго. Единственное, учитывая недостаток времени, я остановлюсь, наверное, только на основных. Благодаря поддержке ВОЗ и личному авторитету госпожи Жанны Якоб нам удалось совместными усилиями в кратчайшие сроки элиминировать вертикальную передачу ВИЧ-инфекции и врожденного сифлиса от матери к ребенку с вручением Республики Беларусь соответствующего сертификата ВОЗ. Благодаря совместным работам в июле 2019 года был открыт сотрудничающий центр по лечению туберкулеза с множественной широкой лекарственной устойчивостью, где будут проходить обучение врачей из сопредельных стран, что тоже послужит делу снижения смертности от, данной, от данного заболевания. Эксперты ВОЗ принимали участие в разработке программы здоровья народа Республики Беларусь, а также мы очень благодарны за ту работу, которая позволила провести министерскую конференцию в 2015 году, а также две, два региональных совещания по расширению доступа к качественным и недорогим лекарственным средствам. Информация, полученная на этих совещаниях, легла в основу организации обеспечения лекарственной безопасности в нашей республике. Поэтому мы надеемся, что динамично развивающиеся отношения продолжат свое развитие и в будущем. Подготовлен план двухлетнего сотрудничества на 2020-2021 годы, который сохраняет тот высокий уровень взаимодействия. Я надеюсь, что с вновь избранным региональным директором нам удастся сохранить действительно тот высокий уровень взаимодействия, который удалось добиться с госпожой Жужаной Якоб. Ну и надеемся, что в новом качестве доктор Якоб продолжит сотрудничество с нашей страной, тем более в нашей стране ее помнят, любят. И от имени правительства своей страны хочу выразить слова огромной благодарности за ту работу, которая была сделана совместными усилиями. И удачи на новом поприще. Спасибо огромное. You can create miracle with your multidisciplinary abilities, and now the whole world will enjoy your skills. I would like to thank your impressive decade, which included a lot of achievements. Health 2020 will emphasize on determinants of health, equity, communicable and non-communicable diseases, and preparedness and response to emergencies. You impacted innovation and health information and a scaled, uh, tailored support to countries. Diplomatic sensitivity and humanitarian values were your navigator tools. You opened the gate of WHO for professional collaboration with a lot of charm. We appreciate you and I will miss you very much. DG, Dr. Tedros, thank you for your vision and your impressive way to change the world and to bring more equity and health quality. 
And to end my word, I would like to say that Seret Lek Nodion is Kesunum Sipen. Thank you, Israel. Malta, please, and permit me to add Czech Republic. Thank you. Malta aligns itself with the statement delivered by Finland on behalf of the European Union and its member states. Firstly, we would like to thank the regional director for her report and congratulate her on the achievements made in improving the health in our region since she took office since 2010. A lot has been done to achieve what we have achieved. It was in Malta in 2012 that the Regional Policy Framework for Health and Wellbeing, Health 2020, was adopted as a guiding framework for health policy development. This has contributed significantly to the promotion of and investment in public health and has helped guide our national health policies. At the launch of Health 2020, Dr. Jakob highlighted poverty as the greatest threat to our people's health. Today, this still holds true. It is both unacceptable that people are unable to access health services because they are poor, or that they become poor as a result of ill health. As highlighted by Norway and Portugal, the high prices of some medicines continues to exacerbate this. Health is a political choice and commitment. As we all look for better and more equitable health for the people of our region, it is the responsibility of every country and national government to prioritize and pursue universal health coverage, especially as we face ever-evolving health challenges. The Ministry for Health continues to strengthen Malta's health system, focusing on sustainability and innovation, and commitment to an intersectoral and participatory implementation of Health 2020 and Agenda 2030. We will continue to further improve coverage of essential health services and improve the quality of life of marginalized groups. Prevention in combination with a life course approach is potentially the best answer to improved and sustainable health and well-being through supporting and empowering individuals to adopt a healthy lifestyle, preventing ill health, promoting vaccination, and preventing the need for the use of secondary and tertiary health care. This goes hand in hand with investing in and strengthening primary health care as the first level of care and contact with health systems. To enable in innovative primary care provision, our primary health care is therefore undergoing significant reforms with a focus on integrated care and move movement of services into the community. DG and RD, you have both shown strong support for the, strong, for the Small Countries Initiative, which has been successful in working towards the implementation of Health 2020 and has enabled the sharing of knowledge and promotion of action by smaller countries like ours. Malta is proud to continue to play an active role in the WHO Euro Small Countries Network, pioneering new ideas as best practices. We are grateful to the regional office for their work with member states, in particular the collaboration and continued support in the development of our national health policies. Malta takes this opportunity to thank you, Dr. Jakob, for your outstanding leadership and service. Together with the team that you have led, we thank you for all your hard work and dedication. You, we look forward to continued work and collaboration with you and augur you well for your future work at WHO. We will continue to support the DG and Deputy DG as they continue to strengthen WHO's leadership in global health, working seamlessly across all three levels of the organization and aligning work at both global and regional levels. Thank you. Thank you, Malta. Czech Republic, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, regional Director, Distinguished Delegates, uh, the Czech Republic fully aligns itself with the statement delivered by Finland uh, on behalf of the European Union. Beyond that, uh, also on behalf of the Czech Republic, we would like to personally thank the Regional Director Jakab for her enthusiasm and strong leadership during the past 10 years. Thanks to her vision, the Health 2020 could be adopted. The implementation of Health 2020 National Strategy for Health Protection and Promotion and Disease Prevention 
also belong to our Czech national priorities. Its implementation has highlighted the need for multi-stakeholder multi engagement and cross-sectoral action, which means the approach the Director Jakab always strongly encouraged. Thank you, Director Jakab, dear Susanna, for being our regional director, our leader and advocate of better health for all. We wish you all a lot of success in your new role and are looking forward to future and continuous cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and thank you all for your excellent cooperation. Uh, as there are no other member states uh, wishing to take the floor, I would like to give the floor to observers. Please make your statements as short as possible, as we are running out of time, and uh, Dr. Rosling's uh, speech cannot uh, be later than 4 o'clock. Uh, don't forget that you can always give your hard copy to the Secretariat. Firstly, I would like to give the floor to Mrs. Alana Armitas, Regional Director of the United Nations Population Fund. Mrs. Armitas, the floor is yours. No? Yes. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to address uh, WHO Europe's 69th Regional Committee on behalf of the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA. Excellencies, distinguished delegates and colleagues, I thank Director General Tedros for his inspiring opening remarks and join in the congratulations to Dr. Zuzana Jakob for her outstanding tenure as Regional Director. It was a privilege to work with you, Susanna, to advance the health and well-being of people in the European region. You brought dynamism and a collaborative spirit to the regional UN system, and I wish you great success in your new position as Deputy Director General. Ladies and gentlemen, Her Royal Highness the Crown Princess of Denmark said it so eloquently this morning. 2019 is a very special year. The global community is celebrating the 25th anniversary of the International Conference on Population and Development and its visionary agenda adopted by 179 member states in Cairo in 1994. The celebrations will culminate in a summit on ICPD 25 hosted by the governments of Kenya and Denmark and UNFPA in Nairobi, Kenya from 12 to 14 November this year. The Nairobi Summit is a unique opportunity to help lift up women and girls with a focus on three transformational goals. Zero unmet need for family planning, zero preventable maternal deaths, and zero gender-based violence and harmful practices against women and girls. In this region in particular, we have made incredible gains over the last 25 years, but the ICPD agenda remains unfinished business, also in our region, and we urgently need to move faster to reach these goals and the SDGs by 2030. With the European Sexual and Reproductive Health Action Plan to be discussed on Thursday, we have an excellent regional framework, and several countries have already put in place national implementation plans. No region is better placed to make the final effort to achieve universal access to sexual and reproductive health than this region. It's a catalyst for empowering women and young people to realize their rights, fully participate in all aspects of society, and help propel their countries towards stability, well-being, and prosperity. The Nairobi Summit in November provides an excellent opportunity for all member states from the Europe region to step up and make bold and ambitious commitments to close the remaining gaps and ensure rights and choices for all. I thank you very much and reiterate UNFPA's full commitment to work with all member states in Europe and Central Asia in this endeavor, together with our partners at the World Health Organization and the UN system more broadly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now let me invite United Nations AIDS and uh, Professor M Michael Kazachkine. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Director General, Regional Director, Honorable Delegates, I'm speaking here on behalf of UNAIDS 
and of its other 10 co-sponsors in addition to WHO on behalf of the regional UNAIDS director as well on as on the personal basis. First, I wish to thank Dr. Tedros for his visionary statement and to thank you, uh, Madam Regional Director, dear Susanna, for your report. Congratulations, dear Susanna, for your leadership and for remarkable achievements during your tenure here in office. Warm thanks to you and to your entire team in Copenhagen and WHO country offices across the region. Of particular significance to us during these 10 years have been, Madam Regional Director, the specific programs you launched to face the challenges the Euro region has been confronted from the issues of health of migrants to those of health inequities, primary health care and health system reforms. No incoming challenge and no anticipated health challenge for the next 10 years have been left aside. You have always taken action and you always did so in consultation with other UN partners, member states, civil society, always keeping in mind the millions of people whose lives depended on your work. And among these, the persistent challenges posed by the epidemics of HIV, multidrug resistant tuberculosis and hepatitis have been most important. Progress is undeniable in the three diseases. In Eastern Europe and Central Asia, the testing and treatment cascade was 63, 28 and 22 in 2016. At the end of 2018, it was 72, 38 and 29. Still not on track to reach 1990 by the end of 2020, but progress in all countries. The incidence of TB has continued to decline at a rate of 4.7% across the region in recent years, together with an increase in detection and improvement in treatment outcome of resistant forms of TB. You have helped place hepatitis on the political and program agendas across the region, now resulting in rapidly increasing uptake of direct antiviral therapy. And we believe that your decision to bring the three diseases under one team in WHO Euro has been a significant strategic decision for the region. Madam Director, you have also consistently drawn the attention of this regional committee and ministries of health of this region to the persistent challenges posed to the region by the three epidemics. The heterogeneity of the epidemic dynamics between West, Center and East of Europe and the persistent threat for public health that uncontrolled HIV, MDRTB and hepatitis represent for Eastern Europe and Central Asia as well as globally. As you have said on many occasions, it is unacceptable that the number of new HIV infections continues to increase in most countries in Eastern Europe and Central Asia when other countries and cities in Euro are on track to end AIDS. The coverage with treatment and prevention, particularly for most at risk key populations, remains inadequate to get on the fast track. One in five newly infected persons with TB presents with MDR-TB and one in eight newly diagnosed TB case in the region is in fact an HIV-TB co-infection case. Hepatitis treatment is only at a very early stage in most countries, despite the availability of effective and now affordable medicines. Clearly, there is still work to be done, but you have always engaged clearly and loudly. Whomever successes you, you have left an urgent roadmap to get the job done. Thank you for your support and for developing a strong and effective collaboration between WHO and UNAIDS at regional level, also extending this to other agencies of key relevance to health, UNDP, UNICEF, UNODC, UNFPA. We at UNAIDS and I, from a very personal perspective, wish to thank you and extend our warmest wishes for the future. We look forward to working with you 
and your successor in the spirit of cooperation in the very sense of the word. Thank you. Thank you. I invite now Mrs. Etleva Kadili, Director of the Supply Division, United Nations Children's Fund. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Director General, Region Director of Europe, WHO, Your Excellencies, distinguished members of WHO Region Committee for Europe, dear colleagues, good afternoon. First, thank you so much for giving UNICEF floor to make special remarks on this special Region Committee. In looking forward to the nomination and election of the new Region Director, I express my deep appreciation to Dr. Susanna Jakob for her leadership and collaboration. And I wish an equal incoming um, special regards to the incoming Regional Director every success. I'm also taking this opportunity to congratulate uh, Mrs. Jakob on her success on her new role as Deputy Director General. And I personally look forward to our continual uh, collaboration and her leadership in this new role. In the region we are living and working in is really diverse, made up of middle and high, com uh, high income countries, spanning across the EU member states to the Central Asian republics. Over the years, we have seen many of these countries achieve noteworthy success in terms of economic growth and social indicators. But there are still disparities being masked between those who have benefited from the progress and those still on the margin of that progress that most vulnerable, including children. Low vaccination rates and ongoing measles outbreaks call for vigilance and greater efforts to improve universal routine immunization to protect every child. Undernutrition found alongside obesity in many parts of the region represents a double burden of malnutrition. Neonatal mortality rates in Central Asia and the Caucasus, which are twice as high as in the Central and Eastern Europe, remains an unfinished agenda. These are a host of other unfinished agendas to address. Tackling those challenges requires collaboration, and I wish to reaffirm the strong partnership between UNICEF and WHO. Together, we are making a difference on the ground. Together, the procurement of vaccines, essential medicines, and related supplies. Together, we are working to close the nutritional gap that put children at risk of a lifetime of poor health and stifled development. Together, we are supporting the implementation of every newborn action plan and accelerating progress towards the survival and healthy development of the youngest in this region. It is great to see how countries in this region, for example, in Kyrgyzstan, where we launched the Every New Ch Newborn Action Plan, the government is moving forward to address and identify the gaps. Our partnership also with WHO continues to generate greater synergy in supporting immunization and system strengthening. For example, in Ukraine and other countries across the region, particularly during the ongoing measles outbreaks. We are also working jointly with WHO, UNAIDS, UNFPA, UN Women, and other co-sponsors in supporting national governments to validate their progress towards the elimination of mother-to-child transmission of HIV. Six countries are currently in progress of certification of their eliminate mother-to-child uh, achievements. In this context, we also welcome the WHO progress report on this implementation of the action plan. UNICEF in Kazakhstan, together with the government, was able to save $37.2 million during the period of 2016-2018 uh, on procurement of coverage of antiretroviral medicines, and country consequently doubled coverage from 50% to 90% due to these savings. 
the work done in partnership between WHO, UNICEF and Medicine Patent Pool and suppliers, as well as other partners, is allowing access to generics and has helped Europe and Central Asia region to leverage procurement and um, make the, their program most cost effectively. Still, the challenges are ahead of us and we are very excited to collaborate with WHO Euro on country decision making and demand mobilization to support introduction and sustained access of affordable new vaccines such as PCV, HPV and other specifically with a focus on middle-income countries and how we can support those countries that are not benefiting from uh, donor support. UNICEF and WHO on addressing these issues around also adolescent mental health and health in second decade are a field of growing interest and this warrants much more research and collective understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the final point in my comments in this regard is with regards to rights of every child has actually no expiry date. 30 years ago, world leaders made a promise to every child to promote and protect their rights by adopting the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, an international agreement on childhood. Governments has taken since action to ensure more children survive and develop, fewer suffer discrimination and more can participate in their societies. The reality that not every child is enjoying a childhood today, including in this region, being denied of adequate health care and nutrition calls upon to all of us to do much more together for the rights of every child everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, I give the floor to Mrs. Ulla Karin Nurm, Director, Northern Dimension Partnership in Public Health and Social Wellbeing. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. Uh, dear Mr. President, General, uh, Director General, Ma Madam Regional Director, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to address you on behalf of the Northern Dimension Partnership in Public Health and Social Wellbeing. I would like to begin Thanking you, Madam Regional Director, for the decade of your dedicated work. I am reaffirming that our partnership is in fully supportive of the WHO activities in the region. And in our work, we are striving to complement the WHO efforts in the best way we can. We are particularly pleased with the established fruitful cooperation between the partnership's seven expert groups, which is uh, AMR, Alcohol and Substance Abuse, HIV, TB, NCDs, uh, Occupational Health, Prison Health, and Primary Health Care, and the respective WHO technical programs. Additionally, our partnership has a good experience of working with geographically dispersed offices in the WHO European region, and especially with the WHO European Center for NCDs in Moscow and the WHO European Center for Primary Health Care in Almaty. To illustrate, the NDPH's expert group of uh, primary health care is working largely based on WHO strategies and guidance in order to accelerate the progress on achieving universal health coverage for the people in the Northern Dimension countries. Clearly, there are many issues that require continued, coordinated efforts. For example, the importance of a comprehensive alcohol policy on the international level can't be underestimated, since many aspects of alcohol policy cross the borders. There is a need for a vigorous progress in Europe with alcohol policy, as the regional action plan is coming to an end. In this regard, the NDPHS is committed to contribute by fostering cross-border collaboration among our partners. Along with looking forward to strengthening the ex existing links, we are exploring new ways to support the efforts initiated by the WHO. By way of examples, uh, I would like to mention that during the recent annual forum of the EU strategy of the Baltic Sea region in Dansk, our partnership launched a seminar on circular economy and health. Our aim was to bring this theme on the intersectoral political agenda and raise the awareness about health impacts of circular economy among the policymakers who are representing fields other than health. 
To wrap up, at the moment, our partnership is in the process of developing its new long-term strategy, setting new targets and revising modalities of work. Healthy ageing will be the cross-cutting theme prioritised by the partnership. And finally, Madam Regional Director, dear Susanna, please allow me to express our greatest appreciation to your solid visionary leadership, enthusiasm and excellent commitment in striving towards making health a major political objective and a marker of political success in Europe, as well as worldwide. Kösönöm. With this, I thank you for the attention. Thank you very much. And now, Dr. Tedros, Dr. Jakob, as there have been a number of comments made and specific questions raised, you may wish to take the floor. I'm sure you wish to take the floor. May I first ask Director General to respond to comments made? Dr. Tedros, please. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Dr. Tedros gives the floor to Susanna Jakob. Uh, I will take the left over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I will be short. I am really touched. And I would like to thank you for all your positive comments and the support which I will share with our staff because this is our joint work and with all the champions who have worked with us over these 10 years. And I would like to use this opportunity also to congratulate you all because these results and these achievements are our joint achievements. Without you, it would have been impossible to make progress. And it is very clear to see also what are the challenges ahead of the region. And I'm pretty sure that you will take continued leadership on this and you will work together with the new incoming regional director as well as with the director general to respond to this. And you can count on my full support, both in the handover process to the new RD, who will be elected tomorrow, and then also in the years to come uh, to continue the collaboration with this region from my new capacity. And obviously, this region will always remain very much in my heart, and it will have a special place in my heart in the years to come. So that's all I want to say. There are no specific questions to me. So I was in an easy position. It was more to thank you for all this. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the warm words. And thank you for all what you have done for Europe. It's our joint achievement. Thank you. We all thank you. Dr. Tedros, please. OK, thank you, Johannes. Uh, I will also be very, very brief because most of the interventions were in the way of recommendation and, and feedback. So we, we, we have taken note of that and we will uh, make use of it. So thank you so much for your guidance, for your comments, for your recommendations. Uh, then I will focus my intervention maybe on a couple of issues. Uh, one question, maybe I'll start was Ebola. Uh, I came uh, from uh, Democratic Republic of Congo here, actually, directly. I arrived yesterday. Um, and this is my 11th visit. And I travel there almost every month uh, because we don't want to repeat what happened in West Africa. This is a very complicated one, even more complicated than West Africa, because in this region of uh, DRC, uh, there is insecurity because more than 20 armed groups operate in eastern, uh, in North Kivu alone, where the outbreak is raging, and there is political instability. And then, because of political instability and security, the level of poverty is really serious, and most of the infrastructure is destroyed because of more than two decades of war, and the health system being one of those that's really you can say it doesn't exist. Um, so the um, reason behind uh, all this uh, Ebola uh, outbreak is there are conditions that are conducive to the transmission uh, because, one, the health system is weak or it doesn't exist. And on top of that, there is insecurity and political instability that fuels the outbreak 
because when there is attack by one of the rebels, two of the most potent are called ADF and Mai Mai. When there is attack by them, the response is disrupted. When the response is disrupted, even for a day, then the virus gets advantage, gets a free ride and gets transmitted. So starting from last August, you see a zigzag. When there is attack, the transmission increases. And when we get some peaceful days or weeks, the virus de de decreases, the prevalence or the number of cases decreases. And then when there is attack, it increases. So it's a very volatile situation. And that's why we have to give it our best. And that's why I travel there almost every month. And now, because of that, they even gave me a local name from the Nandi community, which is dominant actually in the North Kivu area, for those who know DRC. So my name is Paluku. <laughs> and that's how they call me when I go back uh, to DRC. Uh, of course, the government is doing its best. The overall coordination and leadership is by the government. And then under that, WHO also, uh, because of the global mandate it has, it does the coordination under the government, bringing all uh, uh, partners uh, together. And based on the new strategy, we have now five pillars. And many of our partners who spoke uh, today, UNICEF uh, and others, the World Bank, have specific responsibilities based on the uh, pillars. And we have also a UN coordinator who is helping in creating the enabling environment especially the security and uh, political uh, issues that are affecting uh, the response. And then going to the situation uh, now, uh, so far we have around 3,000 cases since uh, it started in August 2018, more than 2,000 deaths and 1,000 survivors. So you can see the problem is uh, uh, serious. Uh, but the good news is the outbreak reached it, its climax in April, and we were getting around 120 cases per week. And then in July, August, it declined into 80 cases per week and started to have some stability. And since the last two weeks now, we're getting 40 cases per week. So there is a continuous decline. But this is in the middle of still the insecurity because uh, since January, from January up to August, there were 248 attacks and seven people were killed. One of them is a WHO staff, as you know. So we're even paying, paying life of course, to save uh, lives. During this outbreak, there was attempt of the virus to cross to Uganda, and four people managed to cross with Ebola, but the virus didn't establish transmission locally in Uganda. It was taken care of immediately. And then the other serious problem we encountered in the, especially the last two months was, it crossed into Goma, uh, some cases, and this is more than a month ago now. And Goma, as you know, is a city with two million population, which is high, and with a lot of uh, population uh, internally displaced. So the city is really uh, congested. But in addition to that, that's the outlet uh, of the RC, especially from the eastern part to the outside world. So having uh, Ebola in Goma means the risk of transmission or crossing to becoming a global problem increases, the risk increases. So that's why when it crossed to Goma, we say this is serious. And that's why the uh, emergency committee recommended to me that I should declare public health emergency of international concern. And once it crossed to Goma, that's what we did. Of course, 
the cases that cross to Goma were taken care of, and there is no local transmission in Goma. So the Ugandan story and the Goma story shows to you, which many of you have said, uh, the importance of preparedness. When you fix the roof before the rain comes, or when you invest in preparedness, you can prevent uh, as early as possible from the outbreak getting out of uh, control. And then not only you can save lives, but you can save uh, resources uh, too. So that takes me to the other message. Not only we're fighting in DRC under the government of the leadership, again, let's make no mistake, this is not the responsibility of the partners, including WHO or so. The main actor is the government, and most of the staff are from the government itself and giving its, 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 its best. So while working in DRC, we are also help working with the neighboring countries. And many of the neighboring countries, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan, have already vaccinated their health workers in the neighboring countries. Uh, districts uh, so that um, because most of the transmission actually even in the RC is in the health institutions themselves so when health workers are uh, better protected then they can uh, give better service and that's also part of the uh, preparation in terms of fighting uh, Ebola in the neighboring uh, countries. So DRC plus protecting the neighboring countries, and that's the strategy. And then with the declining number of cases, there is hope. But still, we should be very careful. As I said earlier, although there is now a change, a decline from 120 cases per week during its climax, now to 40 cases uh, per week, it's very volatile. Because if there is attack, because there are still rebels there, operating, which follow a guerrilla uh, tactic, when they attack, the program or the response could be disrupted. And when it's disrupted, the virus gets a free ride. And then two few cases, three cases can trigger another, spark another fire, and then another peak. Then we're going to again follow that spark, that fire, and then declines and can come back. So. There are some colleagues who say, what's your prediction? When are you going to end it? To be honest, we should not make a mistake and we cannot predict it because the overall environment within which Ebola is raging is dangerous and it makes it very difficult to even predict because you're not just giving the public health response uh, within a stable area, but a public health response within a war uh, uh, situation. So that is uh, the problem. But another good news, although we have to be, we, the decline for the decline, we should say there should be cautious optimism if you're going to be optimism, optimist. It has to be very, very, very cautious optimism because the risk is very high because one case can spark another fire. But on the other hand, I will give you another good news. Ebola is no longer now as scary as it used to be because it's preventable now and it's curable. Preventable because we have a vaccine which is very potent, 90, more than 95% effective. And we have a treatment, especially two. You know it was already um, in the news, uh, two therapeutics which are very effective. So it's preventable, it's treatable. But because of the security situation, that's why it's volatile at the same time. And that's why also we have to be careful in, uh, and continue to be very, very serious uh, because it is not, it will not be over until it's over. Even when there is decline, it's going to be, it should be taken very um, uh, carefully or any conclusion should not be made without considering the overall situation. Then the last is related to the first. There is insecurity, there is political instability, and there is weaker system. 
But we should operate within that environment because the political instability and insecurity cannot change. You can, we cannot change them in, you know, in, the short, in a short time. So the only option we have is we operate within the condition while, of course, uh, trying to address the root causes or the uh, chronic problems like the political instability and so on. Then operating within the current environment should include, though, not only Ebola, but other health problems. You know, when I go to DRC now, it's embarrassing for me to talk about Ebola only. Because I know full well malaria is killing more than Ebola. Do you know, in one year, malaria kills more than 48,000 people. Ebola killed 2,000. Malaria, 48,000. You can't even compare it. Measles killed in eight months 3,222 people. Compared to Ebola, still higher. There is cholera outbreak, outbreak and that is killing. There is chikungunya outbreak as if it's not enough. But not only that, the sad story is maternal mortality in DRC is one of the highest. And mothers are dying due to complications during labor, due to weak health system, but also weak infrastructure. When mother, a mother is in labor and complicated, you know, you, she can't even have access because of the infrastructure to any health facility that, that she can go. So when we talk about Ebola, we have to talk about the other problems too. Because when I interacted with the community, as I told you, I go very often and I speak to the people in the street, and they say, why are you overplaying Ebola? We're dying of this and that, and Ebola is less important than malaria and measles. Is it because you're afraid of, uh, you know, this uh, Ebola coming to you and protecting yourself, or is it because you think for us? The international community should be honest, and we should be honest and say, I think we're scared because Ebola can come to my house, but malaria and cholera may not. So they're right. That question is true. If we agree, then the solution is we have to show our solidarity not only to fight Ebola, but to fight the other major killers in that region and commit to not only fight and finish Ebola now, but commit beyond Ebola for the sake of the mother, for the sake of the children for the sake of the people who say, if you care for us, help us in a comprehensive way. And that's why we have committed, as UN, and I know many of our partners, donors are also joining during the recent visit. The US has already confirmed that the Secretary of Health, he was talking about it with strong language, actually, to help in strengthening the health system. And I had already met the president a couple of times now, and we have agreed to host a conference, health conference in Goma in November. So I'm inviting you to show our solidarity and help and contribute to strengthen the health system of DRC. And making it in Goma will be very important because that will show that it's the center of the outbreak now and we'll show that not only we will be fighting Ebola, but we're with you to strengthen the health system of Eastern DRC and the whole country. So through that, showing our true solidarity to, to DRC. So we have already started thinking about the future and telling the community that we stay to support you. And many of you who supported us here, I can give a long list Many donors are in this in this room. I really appreciate, on behalf of WHO and uh, the whole uh, UN and the, uh, the DRC, and we will uh, hope to get your continued support, not only to finish Ebola, but to 
address the root cause of the problem. But for all the support you have already given, thank you so much. We wouldn't have stopped it where it is now. It's still in the RC. It tried to live, but was controlled and confined in, in the RC. It would not have happened without your support. So thank you so much. This is a very important issue, and that's why I took uh, my time. Then one other issue I wanted to comment on, very brief, is the transformation. Uh, Finland, thank you for raising that. Kitos, and I have many, uh, Kasenam also. <laughs> and on transformation, the first phase is finished, the redesigning and so on. But the transformation will continue because we have to implement it. The most important is now. So we are telling our staff, it's the phase changing, but the transformation continues. Because the transformation, when implemented, is actually going to accelerate what we have said we will, we will do. Of course, at times, the transformation can be slow. Because, as you know, a big ship, turning it left or right, is it takes time. But not only that, it, it, it's not surprising that it can be slow because there is a big appetite for change and all the change agenda or recommendations that came from our staff are actually too many. Very important, but many change ideas that we have accommodated in the transformation. And WHO in its 70 years of history, not, not in any time had tried to accommodate as many change ideas as, as possible to prepare the organization for today and prepare it for, for tomorrow. So there was a big appetite for change. That's why we had many ideas from the staff and we should implement those uh, ideas. And it's time now that we have already moved into implementing them. So this is the implementation phase of the, uh, the transformation agenda. But I'm really sure when the change agenda is implemented, WHO will really be an organization of the future because all the good ideas from the stuff that came will change the organization significantly. And the most central part here is there was a big appetite for change. All the ideas came from the staff and now we will continue involving the staff. So the very staff that contributed the ideas should also implement the ideas through a very inclusive and open process. And that's what we have promised to the staff. All the changes are under the roof of building an open organization that's relevant today and that's relevant tomorrow. So thank you so much again uh, for all the recommendations and, 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 and your guidance. I have taken very serious note of all your uh, comments and we will surely make use of it. And in the transformation, you have been part, you're part through your recommendations now, and you will be, you will continue to be part of the, uh, the, the transformation because at the end of the day, WHO belongs to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much, DRDG. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. And now we can consider Adoption of the proposed draft resolution contained in uh, EUR slash RC69 document one, a report of the regional director on the work of WHO in the European region. Is the committee willing to adopt the proposed draft resolution by consensus? I see no objection. The resolution is therefore adopted.